Good morning, Threshers. Welcome to Convocation. Today's Convocation is part of our Faith Formation series that we're having this fall. Uh, about a year ago, I asked uh, Michael Unruh, our campus pastor, to launch uh, an inquiry and a study into faith formation on campus, how we do it, uh, how we can do it better. Part of that process involved getting uh, feedback and information from the student body and from, and from others. And so the topic of conversation uh, today is uh, a report on, on faith formation and what Michael and the, uh, the task force have learned about uh, what we do here on campus and uh, the possible changes we might make. So please help me in joining, uh, or please help me in welcoming Michael Unruh, our campus pastor. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, I'm Michael Unruh, the campus pastor here at Bethel, as President Gearing said. In the summer of 2020, shortly after I started my position here as the campus pastor, President Gearing approached me about putting together a faith formation task force to dig into the ways that faith formation takes place in this community, to see if it's something that Bethel does a, does a good job of facilitating, and to identify areas of success, challenge, and needed growth. And those are my paraphrases from our conversation. The, wor the work of the Faith Formation Task Force is ongoing this year and seeks to build on what's going well here at Bethel and to seek to be better in areas that are not going as well. Throughout the process so far, we've tried our best to avoid the assumption, the assumption that Bethel is doing everything well in terms of faith formation. But what's the motivation behind doing this? Why study and look into faith formation here at Bethel? Well, faith formation occurs in both the mission statement and the vision statements of the college. So ensuring we're doing everything we can to create an environment where this can happen is crucial. First, from the mission statement. Bethel College prepares students for meaningful lives of work and service through faith formation, the liberal arts, and practical experience in career pathways. And the vision statement. Bethel College graduates students who increase human flourishing, shalom, in society by owning and enacting their faith, demonstrating compassion to, for the powerless, engaging in critical thought, and bringing value to the workplace. So the task force was assembled in the fall, and that has included myself and chair of the Bible and Religion Department, Peter Gorzin, serving as co-chairs of the force, staff members Ashley Hollis, Jill Hoops, and Renee Stuckey, faculty Brad Celestin and Jerry Maline, students Bethany Powells, Natalie Graber, and Skylar Entz, and Heidi Regeer Kreider, a denominational representative from Western District Conference of Mennonite Church USA. Our first task was to do some reading from authors um, who have written about faith formation, the experts, so to speak, and we thought it very important to first define what faith formation even is. It's, it can be a pretty broad concept. So before going any further this morning, we wanted to take an opportunity to engage each of you here right now today. Um, so at, shortly before 11, I sent out an email that you should all have in your inboxes that has some polling questions. Um, so if you could get out your phones if you have them at this time. Um, you can click on the link for poll one, and it's also here on the screen. And I'm going to turn it over to Jerry. Good morning. I'm Jerry Maline. I'm one of the adjunct faculty in the o in the nursing department. I teach the OB portion of that program. But today I'm here representing the, ta the formation, Faith Formation Task Force, and in this poll we ask, uh, we want to know some information to help us guide what we need to do things better, what we need to expand on, what we need to um, leave and get going, uh, that it's going well. So the first question in poll one is, what is one word or phrase that comes to mind when you hear the word faith? 
And what I want you to do is go ahead to that poll and type, type your answer in. They'll come up on the screen so you can see them and we'll go through some of those. Looks like there's a good variety coming in. Uh, the bigger the word is, the more often it has been used. Trust, belief, God, religion, ignorance, trust in God's plan, one with the church, lukewarm, blind, Jesus Christ, fear, Hope, love, grit, believing without seeing, loyalty, peace. Revolution, disc golf. <laughs> Amen. small seed, belief in the unseen. Thanks for responding. That was a good variety of responses. Um, we've been aware that not everyone comes to the idea of faith from the same perspective or understanding of what faith even means. And in fact, we're aware of the possibility of anger and pain alongside some of the more positive words that were shown in the word cloud. We've also known that any definition of faith formation has needed to consider a broad array of religious and value perspectives. Though Bethel is an Anabaptist Mennonite college, a Christian institution, and many of our college's practices are built upon these values, our students, employees, and alumni do not necessarily hold these same values. But if the task is to measure the faith formation of everyone, then everyone needs to be able to see themselves in the definition. To, get, to give us a sense of this reality, we'll now turn to our second poll question. All right, again, we're going to ask you to get to your phones and go to the, the link there and answer the uh, following question for us. What would you call your religious identity or what is your religious identity? I'll read down the list here for those of you who are in the back. Um, first, agnostic, atheist, Baptist, Catholic, Lutheran, Mennonite, Anabaptist, Orthodox, Pentecostal, Presbyterian, non-denominational, um, other Christian, Hindu, indigenous, Jewish, Muslim, none, or other. Um, you can see uh, Christian Mennonite Anabaptist and Christian non-denominational are off the end of the screen. I can't actually, we'll scroll over here, 38 and 33 respectively. Um, Catholic with the third most at this point, other Christian, agnostic, Christian Baptist, and other. So we'll, we'll close this in, in just a moment. 
But as you can see, even in, in this very room today, there's quite a variety of religious identities at Bethel, and there would be even more than this and different numbers if the entire student body were surveyed. So after the task force did some reading and d some more discussion, we settled on the following very broad definition of faith formation. Faith formation is the process, faith formation is the ways people come to make meaning of their experiences, find purpose in what they do, and come to self-awareness of who they are. Faith formation is a process that has inner, communal, and transcendent dimensions that connect the whole person, intellectual, emotional, relational, and spiritual. Faith formation is often oriented ar around or grounded in a center. For example, Christianity oriented around Jesus, with movement toward or away from or around that center. For Bethel College as an institution, that center is Anabaptist and Mennonite commitment to following Jesus Christ, with an understanding and appreciation that not all members of the community may share that center. Books could be written about an additional description and details about that, but this is about as succinct as we could get as a group in terms of what faith formation is. Early on in the process, we recognized that to take stock of where Bethel College has been and is in terms of faith formation, we would need to put together a survey and distribute it to all students, employees, and as many alumni as possible. So over several meetings, we carefully and thoughtfully, though not perfectly, put together a list of questions and the survey was sent out last spring and some of you may have filled that out. Actually, could I have a, a show of hands if you did fill out the faith formation survey last school year? Okay, a few present with us this morning. The goals of the survey were to be broad enough to encompass diverse backgrounds and religious identities so that they would be able to fully participate in the survey to include experiences for evaluation that include coursework or other activities at the college, and also those not explicitly facilitated by the college, like informal conversations about faith with other students. The survey included several um, questions along a five-point strongly agree to strongly disagree scale, as well as an opportunity for survey participants to give comments on each question. And then uh, the, the last goal, to dis disperse the survey as widely as possible to students, alumni, and employees. So the results of that survey last spring yielded, uh, there were 468 responses that were recorded, 103 from students, 67 from employees, and 298 from alumni. Because the mission and vision statements named students specifically, Current students and recent alumni have received a particular focus both now and in the work to come. The survey began with demographic information, asked about various experiences and measures of growth during one's time at Bethel, and then in terms of student demographic in information, the measures on the survey differed slightly from the information collected by the institution, but we did our best to line them up as closely as possible. So I'm going to show just a series of pie charts um, relating the student survey responses to the student body of spring of last year. There was a higher participation in the survey from students identifying as female as compared to the in entire student body. Um, all students are on the pie chart on the left and then the student survey is on the right. The survey allowed for options for non-binary identities and those preferring not to answer the question while the institutional data did not include that information. Recognizing that Hispanic or Latinx is not the only eth ethnicity in, in existence worldwide, the survey did only ask about this ethnicity and compared to the entire student body, the representation was similar. 
In terms of racial identification, it was notable that there was a greater participation of students identifying as white and a smaller percentage of students identifying as black or African American than the makeup of the whole student body. Uh, institutional data does account for non-resident students while the survey did not account for this. For the number of possibilities available for re religious identity, we felt that the survey responses fairly accurately reflected the wi wider student body. You'll notice that um, Mennonite Anabaptist, which is the blue section of pi on the lower left, um, in the survey, there was more participation in the survey than the, the student body and less Baptist participation when compared to the wider student body. Um, Baptist is in yellow. The unspecified option, which is the, the white portion on the left, allows for pieces of the pie to change a little bit if all students would have responded to that particular question on the institutional data part. The agnostic and atheist options were not available for institutional data, and those are the, the red and orange on the right pie chart. It's notable that non-denominational Christians and Catholic, along with Mennonite and Anabaptist, those are the blue, blue is the Mennonite, purple is the non-denominational, and green is the Catholic, make up the top three religious identities here at Bethel, while Baptist is up there as well as a close fourth. Some of the demographic differences, without even looking at the, the other questions on the faith formation survey, already tell a story because the survey was voluntary. So a question for the faith formation task force to consider, along with the specific responses, is were there particular reasons that some students felt more compelled to participate than others? And that's something that we'll be looking at as our work continues. One of the questions on the survey asked how various activities at Bethel and in the community have shaped the faith and or values of a student, and I'm going to turn it over to Jerry for a final time for our third poll question. Okay. All right. Our last question I want you to look at your phones for and take the take the on the poll and answer. We want to make sure that we're listening and knowing about especially your experiences here at Bethel and how we can make that better or encourage those that are working well. So I'd like you to get you on, uh, on your phones and the third poll question is during my time at Bethel so far have I engaged in the following activities? These were activities that we identified that where faith formation might happen. So up on the results screen, um, religion courses, other courses involving religion, um, chapel, Bible studies or small group discussions, convocations about faith, values, religion, talks with other students or friends about faith and values, talks with faculty and staff about faith and values, connection with a local congregation, off-campus service opportunities, and other. Um, convocations about faith, values, and religion uh, seems to be leading the way among us today. Um, religion courses and talks with other students and friends um, also up there as well. We'll leave the poll open for just a little bit longer for you to submit and then we'll continue discuss discussing. All right, so the bar graph that's up here now it gives, you, gives us some idea of how you and your fellow students have plugged, plugged into the various activities here at Bethel so far and in the community, some created and facilitated by the college and others more spontaneous. So we're going to take a look at how that 
appeared on the faith formation survey for students. So on the survey, the activities listed in this slide are showed in order by their average. And the way the question was asked on the survey was, um, uh, answer this or put, put the number by how much it shaped you, with five being shaped me the most or shaped my faith and values the most, number one shaped me the least. Um, so you can see religion courses and conversations with other students at the top. Um, and of note, at least for me, since chapel is one of my primary areas of responsibility, is that chapel comes in about the middle of the pack as the sixth most formative. But unsurprisingly to me, at least, um, especially as I think about my own experiences at Bethel, is that conversations with other students um, and employees is listed toward the top. A few of the student and alum, um, alumni comments, excuse me, sought to make it very clear that their growth through conversations with other students was in no way facilitated by Bethel College. It was completely independent of the institution. And I think that's a great response because I don't want the college to feel like it's in charge of or take credit for something, uh, for everything that takes place here. But it is nice to know that these experiences are formative and that they are taking place in our community, even if the institution can't pat itself on the back for this. Of the students who responded, it looks like Bethel is a place where much growth takes place, as five would have been the highest score for, for personal growth. All of these average pretty high scores. And another interesting point that, that I identified here is that growth as a person spiritually averaged the lowest average score of the four, um, which is, again, something to pay attention to as we evaluate how faith formation takes place here at Bethel. So the comments section, each question did have a comment section where students could respond however they wanted to about the particular, um, particular question that was answered. And they've been very compelling to read and see themes emerging, and they've been a source of rich reflection and thinking, um, at least for me, in the months since it has taken place. The following themes have been taken from all, all the surveys, the student surveys, employee and alumni responses, and they represent a pretty wide spectrum of thoughts. There was appreciation for Bethel's attention to social justice issues. There was disappointment that Bethel isn't more involved in social justice issues. There were thoughts that Bethel does not place enough focus on following Jesus. It was clear from some of the comments that there are different understandings of what it means to follow Jesus based on the particular denominational identity of the respondent. There was some um, discomfort with Bethel's less conservative theology in terms of social issues, especially LGBTQIA plus inclusion. There was also critique of Bethel's negative treatment of those who are LGBTQIA+, and that was from both recent and older alumni. There's a, there was appreciation for Bethel's non-forced religious participation. There was both appreciation and criticism of Bethel's openness to a variety of religious perspectives. There was concern about a loss of Mennonite and a Baptist distinctiveness. Surveys revealed a desire for more opportunities to explore faith, prayer, worship, and from more than just a Mennonite perspective on these issues. And last, um, faith, a distinction that faith and value formation have been outcomes not facilitated by the college. As I, as I mentioned earlier, some of the respondents were very clear that that was not the case. So um, after hearing the comments, looking through the surveys, there's more analysis of the data and comments needed. But here are a few of the tasks that lie ahead for the Faith Formation Task Force and potentially Bethel College more broadly. To build on the activities that were identified as more formational in the surveys. To, uh, to evaluate and, and strengthen the less formational act activities, which could include letting go of things that aren't seen as, as formational by the students. Potentially following up on compelling and concerning comments, particularly those that identify harm done from the institution. 
to filter responses for possible themes among specific demographic groups and religious identities. And one of the things that um, I've been working on with those who have helped plan chapel this year is having chapel themes that focus on following Jesus, which consider a variety of characteristics of Jesus and his ministry. And by that I mean to say not um, separate understandings of what it means to follow Jesus, but recognizing that each of these different emphases can be parts of a whole and all an all-encompassing way of following Jesus. The hope there would be to pull in various denominational identities into that chapel experience. So lastly, the Faith Formation Task Force is excited to continue working in the coming year as we seek to build on what's going well here at Bethel and also identify ways that we can better connect with, support, and encourage the students here in the Bethel College community in their journeys of life and faith. So, after hearing from me for a while, you're probably in need of a break. So we're now moving into a time where you'll be hearing from four seniors about their experiences of faith and life during the time they have spent at Bethel and as they near the end of their time as students here. Skylar Ence, a sophomore, will be asking four questions of her fellow students, and we look forward to hearing their responses. So panelists, I invite you up to the stage at this time. Okay, uh, we'll start off by you guys all just introducing yourself and then giving a little bit of background about your faith journey and stuff. Uh, so hello, my name is Charlie Gibson. Um, as uh, uh, Michael said, I'm a senior. Um, so a little bit about my faith background. Um, I grew up in a small town, um, mostly white, uh, mostly Christian uh, area. Um, so most of the values around that I learned and kind of was brought up around are based in that, in that kind of, with that in mind. Um, within my own family, there was a bit of diversity like within the Christian tradition. Um, so like I have, my cousins are Catholic and so I grew up going to Catholic services with them occasionally. Um, personally, the, the formation that I have within my own faith was um, mostly non-denominational. We weren't really part of a larger church group um, or church organization. Um, so my, my grandmother was actually a deacon um, in the Episcopalian tradition. Um, so I grew up with a fairly diverse, at least within the Christian faith. Um, of understandings of what it means to be Christian, like what actions you have to, um, like what actions you have to do to be considered Christian idea. Um, but again, it was still very small town, kind of like traditional values. So um, if you don't know me, I'm Marvin Phillips. I'm, um, I'm a senior here. And for me, my uh, most of my faith background, I mean, I'm Christian Baptist. Uh, I've been going to the church my whole life. I started in church really young. I was uh, came into Christ at like 14. I believe I was saved. I was baptized at 14. And for me, my uh, most of my, I guess, like faith value backgrounds is definitely instilled from the church. Uh, mostly everything I like, my faith and my beliefs and values that I'm believing all came from the church at an early age. Uh, as far as diversity, I mean, this is like, coming here is the most like diverse, uh, I mean, like Christian backgrounds I've seen, uh, being able to like speak to different religions and get to learn about, you know, different religions. I may not have been around in a, you know, big city where it's more urban and the church was bigger. It was, uh, you know, different just kind of being in my church and in that setting and in those values, but coming here and kind of exploring like different beliefs and different values and backgrounds and being able to understand those what, they, what those are, um, you know, that's definitely something that I'm glad I was to be a part of. Uh, 
Hello, for those of you who don't know, my name is Sam Wilson, also a senior here. And I grew up Church of Christ. That's always been my thing, I guess. Uh, it's how my parents raised me, at least. And I've lived in multiple areas throughout my life, but I'd say I grew up in the South for the most part and in a fairly diverse area. So honestly, being at Bethel's felt like a bit of a step back as far as diversity goes. But I would say as far as my values go, similar to Marv, like kind of just grew up in the church, gained most of my ideology from that and just kind of try to implement that into my life. My name is Bethany Powells, and I am also a senior, um, obviously. And um, I come from two very long lines on my mom's side of Mennonites and on my dad's side of Catholics. And so the compromise then when they got married was non-denominational, which I don't know if you can call that a compromise, but um, that was the tradition that I grew up in. Um, I'm from a very small Kansas town, and you know all of the stereotypes that go with that. Um, but I was very lucky uh, in that my town has a lot of different, um, at least within the Christian perspective, a lot of denominational, um, different denominational groups. And so um, growing up, I sort of was exposed to those um, different beliefs, um, but obviously coming to Bethel was very different for me. Um, otherwise, I was baptized when I was 12, and from that point on, um, my faith has really been central to my life. Um, you know, this whole idea of scriptural authority is important to me, and um, I generally function within sort of more of a de decentralized um, church tradition. So that's my background. Awesome. And then the next question is, how has your college experience solidified or challenged your faith and or values? Since I have the mic, I guess I will start. Um, as I said earlier, coming to Bethel was different for me because it made me realize, again, from a Christian perspective, how many different kinds of things Christians can disagree on, um, which maybe isn't necessarily a positive focus, um, but it was very, very enlightening for me. Um, and that has also been single-handedly one of the most solidifying, challenging, and solidifying things for my faith. Um, I think it's very important for you to be challenged in your perspective because um, that's the way that you grow in your perspective. And um, Bethel has been a space where I could both comfortably and uncomfortably um, be challenged and also grow. I guess for my own college experience, it's been fairly unique attending Bethel. And part of that just comes from like, uh, moving out here to Kansas and kind of being in a small town environment was very much of a culture shock to me. So at times I just definitely found myself questioning why God put me here and just kind of sitting with that for a while. But I'd say over time, I've gotten to know people who aren't necessarily from the same denomination as me, but have similar values for uh, Christianity in my uh, view on it. So overall, I'd say my faith has been challenged in terms of my own personal struggles, but it's grown because of that too. Mm. Um, I would have to say my biggest, well, coming out here for me my, was a challenge in itself, but my freshman year, I faced a lot of, I guess, adversity. And I would always think to like look to my parents or, you know, my friend group to like help me through like adverse times. But like being out here all alone, I'm like nine hours from home. That was tough to, you know, like reach out to a family member. So the only person I really could call on, I really could look to was God in those tough times. So, I mean, I feel like being in a place where I had to intimately learn to connect with Christ made me really vulnerable, but it also opened me up to like being able to accept those challenges and being able to accept a new role with myself in Christ. And I think that the challenge that Bethel brought as far as being far away from home and on my own, it also gave me a blessing in being able to grow my own connection with Christ as well. So college for me has, um, I think it's kind of a, a general thing that college shapes you a lot in what you believe and how you believe it, whether it solidifies things or it challenges and makes you switch your thought. Um, 
Personally, it has given, college has given me a wider perspective. Um, so I decided to major in Bible and religion, which um, for me helped me to dive a lot deeper into um, all of the different like reasons why we have some, like why we have diff all of the different denominations in Christianity, um, all of the actions that has happened um, due to Christian thought and Christian belief, both the harm that it has caused and the things that it may have made a little better, um, at least in how I would look at things. Um, I do think that college, especially Bethel, um, in how they decide to approach things, and especially with the focus on social justice. There has been a lot of things that I personally have had to rethink about um, my own faith and about um, my own values in what I decide to, um, what I decide to focus on. Um, it has also really challenged me in like looking at that push and pull of like what is my individual faith and my responsibility as an individual um, as a Christian, um, and also the communal responsibility that a church has, like what it means to be a part of a faith community and what that community has to do and what that community is responsible for in the broader perspective. Um, so I think college has definitely helped me um, in, in challenging a lot of some of the biases that I've had, um, that I know I have had, and that I'm still working on. Um, and also helped me to see where I can then turn around and help with kind of changing those biases that I've got. Um, have your faith and your values ever conflicted with one another? Um, so for me, that has been a definite yes. Um, so my faith and my values um, growing up were about the same thing. Um, and then, again, when I decided to go into studying the Bible itself and studying um, all of the history behind it, um, there's been a lot of things that have conflicted personally. Um, for me, some of those things would be, um, I felt called to go into the field of ministry, um, but there were some traditions that I grew up in that wouldn't allow me to do so. Um, or at least not in a specific position that I would prefer. Um, and so, like, figuring out how to um, read some of the things that the Bible says and take it at face value versus reading something and then turning and seeing that as um, something that I can both follow God in um, and still not have it conflict with what I... I'm not saying this well. So um, focusing on how I can follow God and honor God in my actions, um, regardless of what a certain, like if a, if a certain tradition pushes against something, I guess. Um, this question was harder for me because I tried to think of a time where like maybe, you know, my faith and values didn't line up but I, I couldn't think of one. So for me, the simple answer is no. And I, I, I think it's because when I think of it, when I look at it, they're like, they're so like into one. Like I think at it and it's like Charlie just said, I think about the two and they line up so equally that it's like anytime I do something that may be wrong or something against my moral compass or against what I believe in, I'm not just going against my faith, but I'm also going against my values. And so that's how I look at it in like determining that it's so hard to decipher one from the next that I never, they never conflict with each other, if that makes sense. Yeah, I guess my response is similar to what the previous two have kind of talked about, where it's kind of hard to keep the concept of values separate from faith for me. So it's like, yeah, kind of what you said, where if I'm conflicting my values, that probably has something that plays into my faith as well, which is why doesn't feel like my values are challenged necessarily if faith isn't involved. I also agree. Um, I would add that uh, we live in a very like politically turbulent time. And I would say personally that I have been like part of communities 
um, or have felt myself like allied to communities uh, whose values don't always necessarily agree with my faith. And that has always been like a personal struggle. And that's still a struggle that I'm working through today um, to really focus on like what does my faith ask of me um, in response to a lot of these situations. So I know that that's been a personal struggle um, that I've had over the last few years. How has encountering religious perspectives different from your own affected your own faith and value formation? Um, it has affected it a lot. Um, I love listening to other people talk about their beliefs, especially when they do so um, from a really well-informed perspective and also a very passionate perspective. Um, I would use my Biffle class as a very good example of that. But it makes me want to understand my faith better, and it, wants, it makes me um, want to be able to articulate my faith better. Um, so I guess having those other perspectives around me has um, pushed me to want to learn more about my faith. And I honestly think my mod mates are a little tired of hearing about it, but there's that. I guess for me, interacting with people of different denominations and religions in general has always been interesting, just because everyone always has a different interpretation of God or how the Bible works or how that plays into life. And I guess for me, it's just been a really interesting experience because you pick up things here and there that you would have never thought of. And overall, I guess it makes me feel a better sense of closeness to this community because at the end of the day, it's different interpretations of the same God, so it all kind of traces back to similar values for me. Um, for me, every experience that I've had, as far as talking to people from different faiths and even the same, uh, it's always been a positive experience. Uh, I never look at it and walk away from the situation feeling harmed or attacked in any way. Even if somebody has total different beliefs as mine, that's the polar opposite. It's like the fact that we can sit down and talk about two different beliefs, two different religions, and still coexist and coexist. I was talking to somebody about this the other day. And still be able to coexist and coexist in the same you know, world and live together. That's like, that's amazing to me. And I think that's the way that God made for it to be. For you know, clearly people are gonna have questions. People are gonna have you know, different ideologies and different opinions on things and what they believe in. But the fact that we can all coexist and coexist together is, is, is something within itself for me, basically. And being able to do that with, within, like, classroom settings or and even in a dorm room is something that I always look forward to and that, um, you know, it excites me. So. Um, I would agree uh, a lot with what was just said. Um, I think encountering different religious perspectives for me um, has given me a much better sense of openness and acceptance um, and has also helped me to, like Bethany said, um, look at and examine my own, uh, my own beliefs and how um, I, I need to respond um, in, a, in a kind and a loving way and not something that could harm. Um, and I also think that, at least in, in this place, in Bethel, um, I haven't had a negative experience in, um, in working around and in learning about other, um, other religious perspectives. Like any conversation that I've had, I've always come away with more knowledge and um, more care um, than I went into it. And then finally, do you guys have any suggestions for ways Bethel can better foster the faith and value formation of students in the future? Personally, I think we're in the right direction. We're moving in the right direction with the Faith Formation Task Force. Um, and there's definitely been some growth in, at least in my four years here that I've seen, um, in working to um, both um, acknowledge and accept other um, other religious perspectives, um, and also in in learning how to build your own value system, or to um, uh, da, 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 to to focus your own value system. Um, so personally, I think we're already moving in the right direction, but of course, I'm not the end all be all, so I don't um, I don't have um, 
I, I have a different perspective than, than others, so. Um, I agree with Charlie on that. I think the um, implementation of the, the task force was a really, it was a good idea as far as moving in the right direction. Uh, personally, for me, I think that one thing that really shaped my time here as far as uh, the faith formation and religiously being able to get in touch with my beliefs was um, when we would have like small intimate groups as, a, as athletes. It wasn't FCA necessarily, but one of the coaches had like started a group of guys and we were just meeting on like Wednesdays or Thursdays. And it was the intimacy of a small group that did it for me and kind of like, I guess it, it allowed us all to open up and to be closer with each other, not just, I guess, like, like seeking God, but it helped us to be closer to each other as a team, as uh, building friendships. And I believe that was very, uh, it was the active participation in that small group that made that, I guess, so life-changing for me. So I would like to see something like that implemented as well. I'd say just to uh, keep providing opportunities for people to express their faith, whether that be through Bible study or chapel or anything else that's like a faith-related activity. And the other thing I would say is that just being able to get like maybe local churches involved a bit more, and maybe not just from a Mennonite perspective, because a lot of the faith-related events that do happen on campus, even though it might not be specifically Mennonite, a lot of that is through a Mennonite lens. So, and I know a lot of students, even though we even saw it on the survey, kind of where not everyone necessarily comes from a Mennonite background. So maybe getting these other denominations involved somehow and providing opportunities to worship in that way as well could be beneficial. Uh, yeah, I would, I would like to challenge um, faculty and staff especially to sort of be more aware of the fact that there are a lot of diverse perspectives on campus as far as faith goes. Um, and to try, especially in classroom situations, to make that more of a com comfortable space in which people can share those perspectives. Um, and I think we're well on our way towards doing that, but that's just the challenge that I would extend. All right, that's, um, that's all from the student panel. Um, had intended to have a little bit of question and answer time um, toward the end. We don't really have a lot of time for that, uh, just wanting to be respectful of your busy schedules. Um, so if, if you have a question for anyone on the student panel or about the Faith Formation Task Force in general, um, you're welcome to talk to me. Um, I think, I don't know, any of the panelists would be open to a conversation, perhaps. Um, and so you can, you can find those people on your own or me. My door is always open when I'm here on campus. So thank you so much for your time and attention. Um, you're dismissed. <laughs>